Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on Windows Server operating systems. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's hop in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on Windows Server operating systems for your R430 server. So let's start by listing the compatible Windows Server operating systems. This could even be updated in the future if another uh, operating system comes out. So do us a favor, if there's something that does get added to this list down the line, drop a note in the comments to help out future users. What we'll do in this video is we're going to actually install Windows 2016 and we're going to do it two ways. We're going to install it directly on to your R430 server and then we're going to actually create a virtual machine and install it onto your virtual machine. So let's just hop in and we'll show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it all. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Windows Server. Specifically, we're going to be installing Windows Server 2019 and we're going to do this in two different ways. The first way I'm going to show you is how to install it locally onto your machine. And then the second way is going to be how do I create a Windows Server virtual machine with VMware ESXi. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is going to be applicable for both different methods. So if you want to install it locally on your machine or create a Windows Server virtual machine, you're going to need to do this step. So whichever method you're doing, go ahead and follow along this right here. And then once we do this, we'll carry on um, first into the local installation. And then after the local installation, we'll create the virtual machine. So the first thing we got to do is install the Windows Server 2019 ISO file. If you want to go ahead and follow the link in the description, this will bring you to the page that you need to go to. So once you've navigated to this page, you want to go ahead and click on the ISO download for the 64-bit edition. And once you click that, it's going to go ahead and start downloading the Windows Server ISO file. Um, this may take a little bit of time, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward through it. Once it's done downloading, what we want to do is insert an empty USB drive into our computer. And once we've done so, we want to go ahead and open up our file explorer and locate the ISO file that we just downloaded and then drag and copy that ISO file to the USB drive. Once it's done copying to the USB drive, you're all good to go ahead and eject the USB drive. And now you can go ahead and plug it into the server and we'll begin the actual Windows Server installation. So what we want to do is go ahead and boot up our server. And during post, we want to press F11 so we can enter into the boot manager. Now, once we're in boot manager, we want to go ahead and press one shot UEFI boot menu. Now we, we want to scroll down and select our USB drive. And then this is going to go ahead and load us into the Windows Server installation. So once we're in the installation, we can go ahead and pick our language. So we're just going to keep it at English. And then we're going to click on Next. And then click Install Now. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and click the operating system that we want to install. So we're going to go ahead and do the Windows Server 2019 Standard Evaluation Desktop Experience. And then we can go ahead and accept the license terms and then click on Next. And then now we want to do a custom install. Since we're doing a fresh installation of Windows, we want to go ahead and do this custom installation. Uh, but if you're just doing, uh, let's say you're upgrading a version of Windows, you want to do the upgrade. Now right here, we want to go ahead and pick the drive that we want to install Windows onto. And then once we do that, we want to click on Next. So this is actually going to start installing those files. So all we got to do is wait this part through. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward that and then we'll resume the rest of the installation. So once that is done, it's going to go ahead and boot back into Windows Server. And then once it's fully booted back in, we can go ahead and set a password that we want to be on the built in administrator user account. So this password can be whatever you want it to be, but I recommend you picking something that would be hard to guess so your account will be secure. Once we've created our password, we want to click Control-Alt-Delete. 
and then type that password in so we can go ahead and log in. And there you have it. We have it successfully installed Windows Server 2019 locally on our server. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to create a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine in VMware ESXi. Alrighty, so now that we've done our local installation, I'm gonna show you how to create a Windows Server virtual machine with VMware ESXi. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have VMware installed on your server. And if you're not sure how to do this, we actually have a video showing you how to do this earlier in our series. So go ahead and feel free to watch that if you're curious. But once you have that installed, you wanna go ahead and log into the web interface. So we're just gonna go ahead and you can open up any web browser of your choice and then we're going to type in the VMware IP address. Once you've typed in that IP address, we're going to go ahead and enter in the username and the password. Once you've logged in, you want to go ahead and create a data store. And once you've created that data store, it'll be on the left side of the screen. So as you can see, we have data store one right here. Next, we want to click on data store browser and then we want to click on create directory. And this is going to be the directory that we're going to put our Windows Server ISO file into. And then we want to click on upload and then we want to select that Windows Server ISO file. And once we do that, this will go ahead and upload the file. So it may take a little bit of time for it to fully upload. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward. And then once it's done, we'll go ahead and continue. So it's reached 100%. So we can just go ahead and click on close. And then now we want to click on virtual machines and then create slash register VM. Next, we want to go ahead and click on next. And then here we can give our virtual machine a name. This can be anything you want it to be, but I recommend it being somewhat descriptive of what the virtual machine is for. Now we want to pick an operating system family. So this is going to be Windows. And then now we want to pick the version. So it's going to be Windows Server. 2016 64-bit. Now we want to actually select that data store we just created and then click on next. And then here we can actually choose our configuration. So we can adjust the number of CPU cores, the amount of memory we wanna to allocate towards this virtual machine, plus a whole lot more. We're gonna go ahead and leave it at the default, but I do recommend you changing these settings um, before creating a Windows Server virtual machine, especially if it's gonna be a very resource intensive virtual machine. I recommend cranking up those CPU cores, cranking up that memory, um, increasing the amount of hard drive space um, and whatever else you need to do based off your application. But we want to go down to this drop down next to CD slash DVD drive one. We want to click on that drop down and then click on data store ISO file. And then we're going to go to that directory we created earlier and click on the ISO file. And then once we've done that, just review all these settings and then click on next. Right here, it'll be another overview of your settings. So if you want to go ahead and review that once more, you can. But then you want to click on finish. So now we want to click on our virtual machine and then click on the power on button. Once you've clicked power on, a console window will pop up and this is our actual virtual machine. So we can go ahead and start that Windows installation process. The virtual machine will automatically boot into that Windows installation. And as you saw from earlier in the video, these are going to be the exact same steps that we took to do the Windows installation. The only difference is, is instead of installing it locally, we're installing it as a virtual machine. So we're gonna go ahead and just fast forward through the installation steps. If you do want to go back through the installation steps, I just recommend going back to earlier in the video where we went through those steps. Uh, but through this, we're just gonna go ahead and speed through that. And then once we're done, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. So just like before, it's going to ask us to create a password for the local administrator account. So like I've said earlier, I just recommend you making that password something that is not easy to guess and something that is secure with a decent amount of characters, upper, lowercase, and numerical values, as well as some special characters. But once we've done that, we can go ahead and log into the operating system and there we have it. We have successfully created a Windows Server virtual machine as well as did a local 
installation of Windows Server directly on our server. So if you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we have plenty of those in stock. We also provide AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic servers, Intel scalable servers, whole lineup. So if you're interested in any of that, shoot us over your desired configuration and we'll go ahead and assist you in any way we can. So go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That is sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, take care.